Hey guys, this is Theojo Tech. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do a clean install when you do your free upgrade from either Windows 7 or Windows 8 to Windows 10. Now, this is not gonna be a true clean install because I tried that and Windows 10 refused to activate even though Microsoft assured me if you just wait, you know, the hardware would identify itself and activate, but it never happened even after 24 hours. So I figured this is going to be the next best thing. I'm going to show you how to do pretty much a clean install. It's going to get you more or less the same effect. You know, there might be a little bit difference, but you probably won't even notice. If you really want to do a true clean install, then you're probably someone who knows how to do that anyway. So I'm gonna show you how to do the next best thing. It's a lot easier, so if you're not that familiar with computers, then you should have no problem. It's really no more difficult than just doing the upgrade in the first place. So why don't I show you what to do? Now, first of all, obviously I have to record off the screen because when we go to do the update, it's gonna take us out of Windows, so I can't really use a screen recorder. So that's why I'm just recording right off the screen. But basically the first thing we want to do is actually install Windows 10. Now if you reserved your free upgrade and you didn't actually get the notification to download it, you can download it right now off Microsoft's website. They have a tool to create the installation media. So this will work if you didn't necessarily get the installation notification yet. Basically I'll put the link to this in the description and what you do is you just pick whichever version you're using, 32 or 64-bit. I'm using 64-bit. So once it's done downloading, I will show you guys what to do. All right, so the download just finished and I'm gonna click Run. So it asks you what you wanna do and in this case, you could actually do upgrade this PC now. If you plan on doing a true clean install later, if you know what you're doing, you can create additional media, but you could probably just hit upgrade this PC now what I did was actually burned it to a disk. So if you do it in that case, what you do is you just click next, make sure you pick the right language because it does not default to English. And then what you wanna pick for edition is the same Windows edition you're coming from. So if you're on Windows 7 Pro, you wanna do Windows 10 Pro. If you're on Windows 7 Home or Windows 8 Home, you wanna do Windows 10 Home. The N is I'm not 100% sure exactly what those are. I think those might be for Europe uh, because of legal disputes, they have to include certain software or not. And then also next you can either pick 64-bit or 32-bit and then you just click next and it would it's gonna generate a ISO file or you can burn it to your USB drive and then that, that'll just create the installation media I already did it, so I'm not gonna go through that process and make you wait, but this is the disc it's on here. But I'll show you what you do when you just hit upgrade this PC now. You basically just hit next. It pretty much just downloads the installation media and then it's gonna run it once it's done. I actually have it on this disc as I just mentioned, so I'm not gonna wait for this to download. It's the same process, so let's see how it works. So once the installation media is all downloaded or you burn it to a disc, you run it and then it just prepares to install it. Once it's done preparing, we're going to download and install updates, of course. All right, so we just got done with the updates and we're doing more waiting. Now we're gonna do what is closest thing to clean install that you can get without actually doing one, and that's change what to keep at this point. And right now, before you click anything, you need to make sure that you have everything that you wanna keep backed up because the way we're gonna do it is gonna wipe everything. So you need to do a backup you need to put everything on thumb drives or another hard drive or anything before you do this because if you're doing a clean install that's exactly what it is it's going to wipe everything off if you just do a regular upgrade where it says keep personal files and apps or keep personal files only then your personal files should stay put but there's still a risk always that something's going to go wrong basically keep files only is going to delete apps but if you have settings in those apps that you need, well, they're gonna get deleted too. So just make sure you have everything backed up just in case. And we're gonna to go to nothing. And this is gonna say everything will be deleted, including files, apps, and settings. So once you pick that, you hit next. And then it's gonna check for updates one more time. And then it's just gonna confirm that this time we're not keeping anything and it's installing Windows 10 Pro. And at this point, we can click install. 
and then it's going to start installing. It's going to restart the computer a few times. So you pretty much just want to let it go. Last time this took maybe 30 minutes. So it doesn't take, you know, ridiculous amount of time. But then again, I don't really have that big of a hard drive on here as the OS drive. So your mileage may vary. If you're doing an in-place upgrade and you have a lot of apps and stuff, it'll probably take a lot longer. Looked like it was having a bit trouble focusing, but I'll come back once it's done and we'll see what happened. So after that first screen, it's going to restart and then you'll just see this and we'll wait again. All right, so after a couple restarts, we get to the configuration page. So you just want to pick all your, you know, typical stuff. It's going to ask you if you want to do express settings. I'm not going to do that. I want to customize what it enables. So personalized speech by sending contacts and calendar details. I don't want to do that. I don't really. You can pick these yourself. Send typing and yeah, no, definitely not sending my data. Let apps use your advertising ID. Don't think so. Location. All right, that's fine. So it can know where I am. Or that can be useful. Browse protection, yeah, sure. Page protection, improve, all right. Can automatically connect to hotspots, nope. You can have these enabled if you want, but connecting to open hotspots, probably not the best idea if you don't know what they are. I'd rather just do it manually. Connect to network shared by your contacts, nope. I want to have control over that. And sure, error messages can go. And then we move on. And you can do a Microsoft account. I'm not going to do it. Type in your name. I'll set a password later. Just going to set things up and then we'll be at the desktop in no time. All right, so here we are and this is pretty much a clean install. You don't see any garbage all over the desktop. There's no apps that were installed by default, none of that. And sure, it's not a true clean install. I'll show you how to do that next if you really want to do it. But for now, this is going to be fine for most people if you want to start fresh without any startup programs or old crap just lying around, anything like that. And from what I read, the actual old files are going to be stored in Windows old. So if you forgot to, you know, save something, it's all going to be in this Windows old file. But I don't need any of that, so I'm just going to end up deleting that. So if you if you backed everything up, you don't need anything you we're going to delete anyway, just hit Windows Old and just delete that. And as you can see, this did not affect my second drive. So I had a second data drive where I have just some footage. I didn't have any programs or anything installed on that. So that drive is still intact. It only affected the operating system folders and user folders, which were all in the same place. So now let's make sure that it actually activated. So we're going to type in activate, see if Windows is activated. And you have to be connected to the internet, and it says Windows is activated. Now, the reason that I didn't do a true clean install is because last time I did this, and I did the upgrade just like I did now, and it said Windows is activated. And then you have to do this no matter what. You have to do a regular in-place upgrade so that Windows will register your hardware and send it to the activation servers. So if you do do a clean install, supposedly it stores that data and can activate it. But that didn't happen, apparently. So it wouldn't activate. So now I just did this type of clean install, which, you know, for this purpose, it's good enough because I didn't really have anything on there anyway. So now, if you want to do a clean install, a true clean install, this is how you would go about doing it. Make sure you burned that original ISO file that we created back in the beginning of the video where it said create installation media. I have it already in the drive and it's a bootable drive. So then we're going to restart the computer. I'm not actually going to do it, but I'll show you the process. We're going to restart and your computer will probably ask you to boot from CD or DVD depending on your boot options. If it doesn't, then you probably have to go into your BIOS and change your boot settings and that's going to be different depending on your computer. So you just have to look that up, but we're booting onto the installed disk now. All right. So when you're doing the clean install and you insert the boot disk, this is what you get. This is the installation setup. And again, this is optional. If you're happy with what you already have, then you don't have to do a clean install. If you really want the clean install, this is how you would do it. And theoretically, you should have no problems. Microsoft claims that since it was activated before, you should be able to do a clean install.
but I had issues, other people have had issues. So if you wanna do this, you know, you can risk it yourself. The worst you'd have to do is just, well, go back to the original Windows 7 or Windows 8, recover that, and then redo the updates. That's what exactly I had to do, so we're gonna click Install Now. It's gonna set up. Now at this point, we don't have a Windows 10 key because we're doing the upgrade from Windows 7 or Windows 8, so you just skip it or click do this later anytime it asks you for a key. And then this is the page in every time you install Windows, you're gonna get the option to do either upgrade, which we already did, or the custom install, which is a true clean install. So I'll show you how that looks. Now this is probably the toughest part and this is really the only thing extra you need to know to be able to do a clean install and that would be picking which partition you want to install to. So you want to make sure it's the right one. I'm going to actually put in a little segment. I'm going to record a little instructional video to help you figure out which drive is which so you make sure that you are going to be picking the correct drive. Okay, so I wanted to insert this part of the video to help people make sure that they're installing onto the right partition. So what you want to do is you want to go to your computer management panel. You can either search for this or right click on my computer in the start menu. It's on all versions of Windows. Once you get to this, you go to disk management and then you're going to get a view of all the hard drives on your computer once they load up and all the partitions as well. So here we are and as you can see I have several different partitions and lots of different drives. Now you might be trying to figure out all right, which is the disk I want to install on. Now I know that my C drive is where my operating system all that stuff is and then you can look here and find that alright well the C drive is on disk 0 so that means that the 953 gigabyte partition on the disk 0 is the one you want to format when you go to install Windows 10 and these other ones if I had the same partition size and everything it might be hard to tell so then you can go and see alright disk E, disk D you'd look at which letter it is and look at the disk number and that's how you'd be able to figure it out if it's not really labeled specifically in the installation of Windows 10 so you can just look at this panel and it should be pretty obvious which is going to be the partition on which drive that you want to format and that's all you do with that alright so at this point presumably you had gone to the disk management in Windows and looked at the different drives and figured out which is the one your operating system is installed to. Obviously mine's labeled OS install because it's a pretty small SSD. So if I were to do a clean install, you would form, you click format, which would wipe that entire partition. So I'm not gonna do that right now, but that's what you would do. And then once it's formatted, then you click next on it, and then you would proceed with the installation, and it would be pretty much the same as the one we just went through and then it would be a true clean install because obviously we completely wiped the partition and would be installing completely fresh but like I said what we did before kind of reset Windows to factory default it's really similar maybe not exactly like a clean install but probably good enough for most people including me alright guys so that is how you do a clean install of Windows 10 as well as an actual clean install if you want to take the risk of not having it activated. They claim it's gonna work, might not. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video anyway. If you found it very helpful, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment letting us know how it goes. I'm actually very interested to you guys who actually successfully do a clean install because I kept not being able to activate it. So if you actually did the clean install the way I described it and it worked and activated, let us know because maybe by that time, Microsoft did get their act together. You guys can also subscribe for new videos three times a week. And if you want to check out other videos, those will be on the right-hand side. You can either click them or look for the link in the description, such as if you're on a phone. If you guys have ideas for video topics, stuff like that, be sure to let me know. I'll be on Twitter. I'll be in the comments section, all that good stuff. So I'll definitely be looking out for what you guys have to say.
So as usual, thanks for watching guys. I will see you next time. Have a good one.